All right, let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. That's Yahweh, be the true name of our Heavenly Father in Hebrew. Yahweh Shai, be the true name of our Lord and Savior. And Rakakadash is the Holy Spirit. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing us this truth. Honor to the brothers that's pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. And to the true believers in Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, that's returning back to him during these last days, so that he will have mercy on them in this time of judgment. Shalom. So we're back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. And just previously, I did a lesson on Genesis 22 and 18 about what this really is going into. Now we're going to read it real quick. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now, this is right after the Lord establish the covenant with Abraham and at the end of that covenant being established the Lord told Abraham and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed and who is the covenant for is for the seed of Jacob the children of Israel so in the seed of Jacob or by the children of Israel shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice because the Lord found favor with Abraham. And these wacky American Christians will say that this means that all people can come under the new covenant. And in Genesis 22, right before verse 18, the old covenant was just being established. So there is no way that the Lord and Abraham will be talking about a new covenant already. The new covenant wasn't being talked about until after the old covenant got broken. And since the old covenant was just established and it ain't been broken yet, why would they already be talking about the new covenant? And then the covenant pertains to the children of Israel. At this time, Abraham only had Isaac. Isaac didn't have Jacob and Jacob didn't have his 12 children yet, which would be the 12 tribes of Israel which is who the covenant is for. So how could they already be talking about the new covenant that the children of Israel ain't even born yet? And the old one was just being established. And just to touch on it, the old and the new covenant is only for the Israelites. Hebrews 8 and 8. For finally fought with them, he's safe. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel nine of the 12 tribes and with the house of Judah, three of the 12 tribes. So the entire nation of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This is Hebrews 8 and 8. The new covenant is told who it is for in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. So what this really means is pretty simple when you read the words for the Christians who don't read. And in thy seed, Meaning, and by the children of Israel shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Meaning that all these nations of people benefit by having the children of Israel around. You know, on a lighter note, you can say we bring a lot of life, a lot of joy, a lot of culture, a lot of spirituality to the earth. We as a people, we literally the most highest gift to the earth. So it's a gift for all these people, for us to be in the presence of all these people, they benefit off of us. You can kind of say they leech off of us too, because we are star people. It's like any basketball team that got Michael Jordan, you know that team was, was going to do good. And same with us, wherever we go, the Lord is with us, so the people are going to benefit. And that's pretty much what this means, people benefit off our presence. And on a darker note, people will actually prosper off our suffering. As we are afflicted and oppressed, people will get rich. And that's perfected in our captivity here in America. America literally got rich off our pain and suffering. As our bodies drop, their bank account increased. This entire system of America was built off our backs. And in our other captivities, the kingdom and all the people in these empires, they benefited by having the children of Israel around. So that's what this is going into. 
you know, for part one. And this lesson here is part two. But this verse will actually be perfected in the time to come, which would be the kingdom of heaven. And so when we read this, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice, ultimately all the nations of the earth will be blessed when the Israelites are in rulership of the earth. And that's spoken about in our next verse, in Proverbs 29, verse 2 through 3. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So that's how all people of the earth is going to be blessed by the nation of Israel. So one more time. And in thy seed by the nation of Israel, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. This verse wouldn't fully be fulfilled until the nation of Israel is in authority. When a white man is taken out of, out of authority, out of rulership, and he is serving. And the Negroes, Hispanics, and the Native Americans, when we in rulership, that's how all people of the earth is going to be blessed. And to get more on what this means, let's finish the verse. Let's start over, then let's finish. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So when the wicked rule, the people will, will mourn, cry, weep, holler, they suffering, they oppress. That's because the wicked is in rule. But when the righteous is in rule, meaning the Lord's chosen people, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the people will rejoice. And when we read this verse, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. This hasn't been fulfilled yet because the righteous, who are the Israelites, who are the Lord's chosen people, are not yet in authority. We in captivity still under Esau Edom, the white man. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Now, ultimately, this is talking about the Israelites because the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we the lowest people on the earth. We the most oppressed. We got the least amount of power. We've been in the most amount of captivities. When people usually take people captive, they usually take the children of Israel because we made all these kingdoms great. But also beyond us, this is talking about all people of the earth. So when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. That goes for all of the nations of people and not just the people. The animals and the earth itself is mourning because the wicked is in rule. Now the wicked is talking about the white man is in rule right now. Because Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. If it's in your hand, that means you got control of it. Who got control of the earth right now? None other than the white man. So he's the wicked. And let's get some scriptural proof that the white man is the wicked. Quick little review. Genesis 25 and 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. This is the birth of Jacob and the birth of Esau. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So the birth of Esau and the birth of Israel. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So the first came out red all over. That's why we got a red baby, a red man. And hairy like a garment. That's why we got a hairy white baby and a hairy white man. Esau is the birth of the first white man in the Bible. And these are two characteristics to show that the white man is Esau. They red people. That's why they got the term redneck. And they hairy people because they the original caveman. And as we go down, Esau was a cunning hunter. We know why people like to hunt. Even past that, Esau hunted venison. Why people love to hunt venison, which is deer meat. So we know who Esau is, the white man. So as we go to Genesis 36 and 8, thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. These are the generations of Esau. So this is the bloodline or the children of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. So Esau is the father of the Edomites, the entire white race. So when we go up, it says Esau is Edom. So anything that the Lord says concerning Esau applies to all of Edom, 
to all the Edomites. That's why it says Esau is Edom. They're used interchangeably. So we know that Esau is Edom. Let's go to Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom, Esau, the Edomites, the white people, safe, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And what was built up? America, Europe, NATO, this entire wicked empire. But the Lord is going to throw it down. But this is the, the focus right here. And they shall call them. They shall call them. They shall call Edom, the Edomites, Esau, the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So Esau, Edom, the white people, they are called by name the wicked. So when you read the scriptures and we see the wicked, that's talking about the white people, the Edomites. Now other people can do wickedly, but Esau, Edom, by default, is classified as the wicked. So that makes more sense when we get back to Proverbs 29 and 2. That when we read, when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the head, hand of the wicked. We know that the wicked by name is the Edomites, the white people. And the white people got rulership over the earth. They're the dominant power and they're in control of everything. They make all the laws. They, they created this whole system. And the people mourning beginning with the Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. But the other people are mourning too. And I got a quick little video that we're going to play real quick to show that the people are mourning. The children of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we've been mourning. We've been crying out for justice, rights, equality, reparations, freedom, equal opportunity, but we still ain't got none of that. But the oppression that we have, other people are starting to feel it because the wicked, the white man is becoming so oppressive and so greedy. So let's get this short clip. Keen dollars to fill up the tank. Tank today. 98 fucking dollars. 98 fucking dollars. I have to decide between buying gas or buying food. And guess who wins? Because I have to get to the job that I need to fucking buy anything at all. That doesn't pay me enough. And people want to donate a thousand dollars to fucking cats. Ninety-eight goddamn dollars at Costco to fill up my tank. Ninety-eight dollars. Five fifty a tank. Five fifty a gallon. At Costco, five fifty a gallon at Costco. This is the work of the fucking religious right. Listen to Robert Reich, who clearly, who do, who gives us all of the evidence, all of the evidence about how our poverty is a choice that our government made for us. A CEO is not worth three hundred and fifty-one times what I get paid, ever. Fuck you, religious right, who are doing this and have been doing this to us. Fuck you, profiteering companies. Fuck you, billionaires, stealing us, breaking our backs, stealing from us, profiteering off of us. Series of fucking panic attacks that fucking work today. Like, we are not supposed to live like this, y'all. We are not supposed to fucking go into work afraid to show your face because you've been fucking ugly crying in the bathroom. Like, what the fuck? Like, I'm on lunch and I don't want to go fucking back in, y'all. We, we shouldn't have to struggle so fucking hard and then struggle to operate, struggle to, 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 to function as a person. Trying to make it. Like, what the fuck, y'all? And I don't have a solution. Like, we just... I don't know, y'all. This ain't fucking it, y'all. This ain't fucking it. I did not picture life being this fucking bullshit, y'all.
and everything is so fucking fixable. Like, we can do it, but nobody will do it. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, love y'all. All right, so that's showing that when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. Now, the second person, you know, the brother, what he's saying is stuff that we've been saying to ourselves for hundreds of years. Life doesn't have to be this hard. And, you know, we got it the hardest. And he said stuff is fixable, but it's really not fixable when the wicked bear of rule. It's not in him to fix what's wrong and to make it right. And then he say, we got to do it. Well, it's going to take the children of Israel, who are the righteous, to fix everything that Esau, the wicked, done effed up. And now the white woman, you see she losing it. And that's not just one person that's feeling that way. There's millions and millions and millions of Americans, white Americans and Asian Americans and people of every race that feel this way about America. People done caught on that the CEOs and the billionaires they, they hogging up all the money and just giving us the scraps. Now, for this woman, she may have it hard, but she'll never know what it's like to be a so-called Negro, Hispanic, or Native American woman. To have, for you and your bloodline, to have been oppressed, beaten, robbed, raped, and murdered for hundreds and hundreds of years. So she just only started beginning to see what it feel like to be us. And the Lord ain't even did nothing yet. Raised the gas prices a few dollars, Wait till, every, wait till the Lord really gets started. People going to lose it. But that shows when the wicked bear of rule, the people mourn. People are mourning all over America. Losing jobs, houses, um, decreasing money, uh, family issues. People mourning. And what, 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 in what other ways is people mourning? Well, let me see what I got next. But that's going, let's go to our next scripture. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7, verse 7, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. So yeah, oppression make a wise man mad. If you happy here in America, you think everything go right, you are not wise. But ultimately, this will be talking about the oppression of the children of Israel, especially if you're Negro, Hispanic, and Native American. If you think you made it, if you think everything go right, you think you're doing just fine in life? You com you completely foolish. Because oppression make up a wise man mad. That just means you blind to the oppression that the white man Esau then clouded your vision and clouded your mind so much. You let Esau convince you that you're equal with him now. You let the wicked deceive you to think that you made it. But again, shorty make up a wise man mad. And even the Edomites, the white people, they starting to feel the effects of the oppression of the wicked. So again, surely oppression make up a wise man mad. It's me and Burmese people, Filipino people, um, eight different Asian and Indian people at work. We all be talking about the managers. The manager's white. We be talking dog stuff about them. So all these people starting to feel the effects of Esau's oppression. Not like we are, but you know, they starting to feel it just a little bit. Because when the wicked, when the Edomites, when the white man bear of rule, the people mourn. And this is what's going on right now. But what's going to correct everything when the righteous are in authority? Because when the righteous are in authority, the people are going to rejoice. And Right now, everybody is still suffering because because of the white man is some of us that got a nasty cough because of the white man, the wicked, a bunch of people got lower back pain because of the wicked. It's a bunch of people with dental issues from eating this food because of the white man. It's a bunch of people that got depression. They anxious. They um, they bipolar. They sad, they done lost all hope in life. They angry. And it's all right to be angry, but we the difference with the elects, we angry, but we got hope. There's some people out here with no hope at all. Esau done robbed you of everything. There's people out here 
on their last legs, physically and mentally. There's people out here with high blood pressure, diabetes. That's all because of Esau. They got all these commercials with, with animals being homeless, talking about adopt a dog, save a dog. That's because the wicked bear of rule. Before the white man started effing up everything on the earth, it wasn't no homeless animals. What else? The food all messed up. Everything GMO got pesticides on it because the wicked bear of rule. You can't even drink the rainwater because Esau done, done contaminated the clouds. You can't even sit outside and breathe the air without coughing and choking. It's toxic. You can't even drink tap water without boiling it. And then after that, it's probably still laid in it, like in Flint. It's because the wicked birth rule. Then what else? All the healthy food costs more, but you can go everywhere and buy cigarettes and alcohol and all kinds of tobacco. That's because the wicked birth rule. So the righteous, we got a lot of damage to undo that the wicked Esau done set in place. And that's going to take us to our next scripture. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. How is the earth going to rejoice? Let the men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. The Lord is going to reign in the time to come after America falls. That's why it says when the righteous are in authority. Yeah, this kingdom of heaven is going to be the kingdom of Israel. The Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans are going to be in rulership, but we're going to be in rulership serving under Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, because the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is going to rule on the earth. That's like going back up. It says, let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice, and let men say among the nations, Yahweh Shai reigneth. So people are going to rejoice when Yahweh Shai reigneth when the righteous are in rule, the Israelites, and not just the men among the nations, not just the people, but the whole earth is going to rejoice. The trees, the plants, the animals, the birds, the fish, the earth itself is going to rejoice because everything is going to be renewed and restored. And that's how when we continue, it says, let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he judges the earth. So the field is going to rejoice. The trees is going to rejoice. The seas is going to roar. Now, this is all metaphors talking about the people, but the, actually, but the actual seas and the trees in the field are going to rejoice because the water's not going to be polluted no more. No more gas and oil spills. No more plastics in the sea. No more forest fires being no more forest fires being started, no more trees being cut down, no more animals and plants going extinct. That's because Esau, the wicked, is in rule. Ain't nothing ever been extinct until the white man got in power. But again, the earth and everything therein, the fullness thereof, everything about this place is going to rejoice. Even the air is going to rejoice. And that's the true meaning when we read Genesis 22 and 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, meaning that in its perfection, that the earth and the people in the earth gonna be in a much better state than they are now when the Israelites are in rulership and the white man, the wicked, when they're taking all of rulership. So when we take the white man and put them under us, people are gonna rejoice. Everything is going to be in a much better state. That's why, again, going back, let the men of the nations, let the men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. And just to end it off, Isaiah 14 and 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We, the people, we're going to take the other people and we're going to set them in their place, meaning under us. And the house of Israel the Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans shall possess them in the land of the Lord. So in the kingdom to come, in the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel, we're going to possess them in the land of the Lord. That's the kingdom of heaven. 
So in the kingdom of heaven, the Israelites are going to possess all the people of the earth. They are going to possess them for servants and handmaids. And they, meaning we, the Israelites, shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So yeah, if we look at our chart of captivities, all these empires and many more smaller empires took us into captivity. So we're going to take them captives whose captives we were, and we are going to rule over our oppressors, which should be the rulers of our American captivity today. We're going to rule over them in the kingdom of heaven. But us taking people captive and people being our servants and being our handmaids, they're going to fare off better serving us than they do serving the white man. Because with the white man, you're going to be oppressed. You're going to be paid unfairly. You're going to be treated unequally. You're going to be stepped on, lied to. There's going to be all kind of fraud and deceit in the air. Your health going to be compromised. Your mental health going to be compromised. You're going to be upset. You're going to be angry. You're going to be enraged. You're going to be sad. You're going to be depressed. But when you serve in the nation of Israel in the kingdom of heaven, again, everybody's going to rejoice. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 31. And let, let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. The Lord is going to reign. We're going to rule under Yahweh Shai and the people of the earth is going to be our servants. And people are going to see the effects when the righteous is in rule. Going back to Proverbs, what is it, 29 and 2? When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So people are going to feel the difference from the white man's rulership to the nation of Israel's rulership. The Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they're going to see everything is much better when it's in our hands, when the earth is given to us, because they're going to rejoice. Even though most pe even though all people are going to be our servants and our handmaids, they're going to be way better off under us. They're not going to be oppressed. Their health not going to be getting messed up. Their mental health not going to be getting messed up. Everything is it's going to be a, it's going to be rejoicing for everybody, and not that they're going to be in root. Not that everybody going to rule in the kingdom of heaven. But everybody's going to feel the difference when the righteous are in authority. And that's the true meaning when we read and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because by the children of Israel, when we rule in, in the kingdom of heaven, the entire earth and all the people in it are going to be blessed by our presence, blessed by our rulership, blessed that the righteous are in authority and that the white man, the wicked, is no longer in power. The earth and the people and everything is going to be blessed and way better off with us in power than the white man in power. So that's the true meaning of Genesis 22 and 18. It's nothing about everybody coming in under, under the new covenant. It says nothing about that. We already know who the new covenant is for. So everybody that's suffering, crying out, weeping and mourning, just hold on tight because the nation of Israel is about to take the earth. So, until next time, shalom.